receive this blessing. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense, and help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O oh God, rich in mercy, you look with compassion on this troubled world. Feed us with your grace and grant us the treasure that comes only from you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
A reading from the book of Amos. Alas, for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure in Mount Samaria. Alas, for those who lie on beds of ivory and lounge on their couches, and eat lambs from the flock, calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, and revelry of the loungers shall pass away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what, sh with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, Remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he, has com he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, 
Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, and he may warn them, that, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'm going to invite the children to come forward. You know what I like about my cell phone? I have my cell phone here. I can get rid of just about everything in my house that's electronic. I don't need a clock anymore. I've got this. I don't even need this watch. I've got this. I don't need a radio. I've got this. I don't need a TV. I can sit there and watch this itty bitty screen. I've got this. Don't need a calculator. I've got this. I don't need an alarm clock. What does an alarm clock do for us? It wakes us up. Just like this. Listen. By the way, I hate this part of it. Ooh. Excuse me. I put it on, I thought I put it on 10 seconds, but it was 10 minutes. We can't wait. <laughs> hmm. It's going to take too long. It's going to take a minute. It's a, it's the smallest I could get it. But when it goes off, it's really irritating. It goes beep, 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 beep. I can't stand it, especially if I'm sleeping. But it has a neat thing you can do. You can push the snooze. And then it gives you anywhere from seven to ten minutes to sleep. And then when the snooze, when that goes off, it goes beep, beep, beep again. And what is the snooze? It's a warning. Get up now. Well, in our gospel text, the rich man, there was a story of the rich man and the poor man Lazarus, and the rich man said, ooh, there you go. Don't you just hate that? All right, I hate it. The rich man said, send Lazarus to my brothers. Because if somebody rises from the dead, they'll believe them. And Jesus said, or the, the Abraham said, they've already had a warning. They've already had their alarm and their snooze. And it came in the form of the prophets. They should listen to them. So it's a little bit of a warning for us that we should listen, listen to the Bible. You know what the greatest thing the Bible tells us? The greatest thing? That Almighty God, the creator of the entire universe, loves each and every one of us, loves Melody, loves Henry, loves each and every one of us. Isn't that great? We should listen to that and believe. Let us end with a prayer. Repeat after me. Gracious God. Thank you for loving us. Help us to listen. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. You can go back to your seats now. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There I, uh, Doug Marlette was a cartoonist, among other things. He had uh, cartoons in 300. His cartoon strip was in 300 uh, newspapers, primarily across the South. And he poked fun at Southern religion. Well, by the way, title of my ser sermon, Opiate of the People. It's a quote from Karl Marx. We'll get to that in a minute. And Doug Marlette had, one of his characters was the Reverend Will Be Done. And he had a ministry to the fabulously well-to-do. And one of the people that he uh, tried to minister to was Big Bubba Tadsworth. Big Bubba Tadsworth was a, a big owner of a corporation. He loved his daughter Veronica, the cheerleader, but he wanted the reverend Will Be Done to adopt out his son, who he didn't care much for. He wasn't good in sports, and he only read books. So he wanted to adopt him out. And the son goes, Dad, that's not legal. Here is the Reverend Will Be Done. I enjoy the Reverend Will Be Done. You might not, but he's contemplating his situation. He's talking about Big Bubba Tadsworth. That man has no morals, no values, no sense of social obligation. He worships the almighty dollar. He lies, he cheats, he steals. He'd sell his own mother if the price was right. But then, and this is the problem, the conflict that goes on in the mind of the reverend. On the other hand, he's a great contact. And he's uh, debating whether or not he should uh, stop being the spiritual advisor to Big Bubba Tadsworth. Uh, should I give up my ministry to the fabulously well-to-do? It's hard to be objective, especially when you're in the Tadsworth's hot tub. You get the point. Well, I bring this up because we have a fabulously well-to-do person in our parable today the rich man and Lazarus. And uh, let me just tell you something about a parable. A parable is a familiar story, so this might be a story that was circulating around in Jesus' day, but what makes it a parable is Jesus put a different twist to it, a surprising twist. And uh, we have a couple of surprises in here, and we're going to look at those. The first, and this is not going to be a really popular sermon today. God is on the side of the poor. That's the first twist. People would be shocked. They thought God was on the side of the rich man. The second thing, God's people are on God's side and were to be on the side of the poor. Two simple points. God is on the side of the poor. Let's look at that a second. We know that in this text. The rich man has no name. This is the only parable in which someone has a name. And that happens to be this poor man. The church has had a hard time with that over the years. When they translated the King James Version, in, uh, the uh, parts of the King James Version were written in Latin, and they translated the Latin into English, Latin rather than Greek. And when they translated the uh, King James Version, this text, into English, they're going, well, Lazarus has a name. He's the poor man. Certainly we've got to give the, the rich man a name. He can't just be the rich man. 
So they called him Dives. Dives is Latin for rich. We couldn't stand not to have the rich man have a name, but it shows you God's favoritism toward the poor. It's actually told us outright in James chapter 2. Let me read it to you. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothing comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and you take notice of the one wearing fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the, poor, to the one who is poor you say, stand here or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. James is pretty tough on his congregation, is he not? But he makes it very clear. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith? and to be heirs of the kingdom. Throughout history, throughout New Testament times, uh, by the way, Christianity was the first religion to treat everyone equally. It was the first religion to have poor, middle class, and rich all in the same room, all together. And even in New Testament times, the poor outnumbered the wealthy. The poor had a particular affinity toward the gospel. The gospel was very attractive to the poor. That's what James means. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith? Even now, where is Christianity growing the fastest? It's growing by leaps and bounds among the poor in South America and in Africa primarily, but even it's remarkable in the Middle East, primarily among the poor. The rich, even rich Christians, have oppressed the poor. Certainly did it in the South. Racism was also part of it. But all over the world. That's what made Karl Marx say that religion is the opiate of the people. The reason he said religion is the opiate of the people is that the church seemed to oppress, be oppressing the poor, uh, telling them to give their money to the church. And why they did it to get what Marx called a false contentment, which, which kept them down and kept them oppressed so they didn't work to have better lives. Now, unfortunately, we can't deny that there has been oppression of the poor by the, the church. It has not been God's will that has happened. But was Marx right? The interesting thing is, in the, in the 60s, priests and missionaries down in South America were becoming secular. They were giving up their uh, ordinations because they believed Marx. And even some communist-influenced theologies were developed. The interesting thing is, though, in the past 50 years, Protestantism has boomed in South America. Villages, regions, areas. It's been primarily Pentecostal um, Protestantism, but it has been gospel-based. 
So sociologists go, hey, great. Let's see if Marx is right. Let's go down there and see whether or not the people are oppressed by the religion. And they were shocked to find entire villages, family life was better. The standard of living had risen appreciably because people believed. They found Marx was not right. He was wrong, dead wrong. The sociologists, some concluded, the only thing we can see is that when these people heard that God Almighty, the Lord of the universe, the creator of the universe, loved them, died on the cross for them, wanted to send his Holy Spirit to them and gift them to serve. It elevated them personally and socially so much their lives flourished. Martin Luther King Jr. By the way, some people called him a communist. But the interesting thing is, if religion was the thing that oppressed people, don't you find it interesting that Martin Luther King Jr. called for more religion, not less. If you read his speeches or listen to his speeches, they were sermons. He called for more religion. What made the South break loose of, of uh, racism enough to allow civil rights? More religion, not less. God is on the side of the poor. That shocked people in Jesus' day. Surely God is on the side of the rich, but then we find out that no, poor old rich man goes to hell. And when he looks up, he sees Father Abraham with Lazarus by his side, and he tries to order Lazarus around. You know, he never did say, uh, Father Abraham, why don't you take me up there with you? He says, he evidently didn't think it was too bad in hell. Just, I just need a little drop of water on my tongue. He doesn't want to get out. He wants Lazarus to join him. Don't you find that curious? And then he says, warn my brothers. And Abraham says, no, they've had plenty of warning. They've had Moses and the prophets. Moses, what did he say? Deuteronomy, chapter 15. If there, is, if there is among you anyone in need, a member of your own community in any of your towns, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your needy neighbor. And then, how about a prophet? Isaiah 58, share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless, the poor, into your house. Well, the good news today is the Lord of the universe loves you, sent his son to die for you. That's great news. God cares for the poor because they have a special affinity for the gospel. They want to believe it. Now, are the poor perfect people? No. Sinners just like us. But they believe the gospel. So God just says, Share the love. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Rejoicing in the Spirit's work among us, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God, we thank you for the church, its mission, and its ministry. Help us to be examples of faith and action and to pursue justice in all we say and do. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the well-being of all creation. Make us wide stewards of your rich and beautiful world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Ruler of the nations, we pray for peace in places of conflict and war. We especially pray for our own country with the unrest, the shootings, and attempted bombings, and violence by police as well as against the police. We pray for exiles, refugees, and those far from home. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, we pray for all those who are lonely or homebound, those who are trapped in any kind of prison of body, mind, or spirit, and for those who are sick or injured. We especially pray for Cindy Anderson, Lael Biella, Carolyn Callan, Doris Embertson, Sophia Fedgley, Dennis Hess, Dennis Holmes, Ellen Malcolm, Janet Littlecrow, Chris Marquardt, Annabelle Moore, Jan Snath, Sean Snellen, Chris Snyder, Lucy Stilwell, Paul Thompson, Lawrence Tillotson, Bennett Wilkerson, Kathy Zinter, and Andrew Stephen Malcolm. Are there any others? We remember and give thanks for all your saints in light and for those who have recently died. We pray that you comfort all who mourn, especially the family and friends of Robert Monsees, Pam Cole, Sean Shanklin, John Albrecht, and Dennis Chapel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scatter among the hills, gather together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together in the hands of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory of Jesus Christ, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We come again to you, O God, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy you've embraced us and healed us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way, equip us for every good work, that we may continue to give you thanks by embracing others with mercy and healing. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. Next week, if you receive the little handout, next week is October and a stewardship month, and you see a, a series, a sermon series listed. And next Sunday, breakfast will be served from 9:30 to 11. Mick, did you have something to add to that? I just want want to say, if, if you are on the Parish Life Committee, could you meet me by the coffee pot um, right after church here? Very good. Let's see. There's two sign-up sheets, one for trunk or treat, the other for the camping trip for the, the church camp out. And right after this service, if you would like to, we would like you to go into the fellowship hall where there are some quilts. Are there also health kits and baby kits? They will all be blessed because that's a Lutheran World Relief um, shipment that's going out this week. And uh, so we're going to bless them on their way to uh, places not only in the United States but all throughout the world. Um, I think that's all I need to emphasize other than read your messenger. Dan, could I announce that this Sunday, after, at 10 o'clock, the second session of Pastor's Inquiry class will be held. At 10 o'clock. That's in the library. Right. And if you weren't able to come last week, that's just fine. Go ahead and come this week. Okay? That'll be just fine. Thank you. All right. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.